Two years ago, Panasonic launched a very impressive camera, the S1H. And the color science was so remarkable to me that I posed the question at the time, is the S1H really a mini Vericam? Now I posed this question because Panasonic themselves said, this is Vericam color science, except in a full frame 6K sensor. At the time, I did not have a Vericam. So my theory was simply just that. But today, a few things have changed. For one, I now have a Vericam, a Vericam LT to be precise, as well as Panasonic has just launched this little guy. It's basically an S1H in a box camera form, which now brings it closer to that of a Vericam by offering a lot of the same IO capabilities as their Pro Cinema line. We'll also have the Evo 1 with us today, just to be inclusive. Simply put, the new BS1H takes the body of the BGH1 and crams an S1H inside. This camera gets us even closer to the look and functionality of a Vericam, but in a minuscule body. Which leads us to ask, can it stand in for their powerful $30,000 cinema camera? Well, you don't have to wait to the end of the video to find out, because I'm gonna tell you right now, not even close. But that is not the whole story, because in this video, I'm gonna tell you where this new camera fits in their product line, what it's really, really good at, and where in some instances you still might wanna go with an S1H, Evo 1, or a Vericam. So, Let's dive in. First things first, here's where the BS1H strays from the S1H. The box form means that you will need to buy either a separate EVF or monitor to use it as a video or cinema camera. Like the BGH1, you can operate it remotely via your cell phone if you like, but this isn't really a professional solution. For streaming and networking, you can fully operate the camera with a computer system as well. And perhaps this is the best use for the camera, and we'll get more into this in a bit. The BS1H also loses the IBIS of the S1H, signaling to users what this camera may be best for, i.e. not handheld, so fixed or on a gimbal. And while we're on this topic, let's examine rolling shutter. This is the first test I did, and I tested all the cameras and was very surprised to see they all performed the same. I expected the Super 35 sensor cameras like the Evo 1 and the Vericam to perform better but they're also older. So I guess it all evens out in the mix. So what's up, why did Panasonic make this camera? Well, simply put, it's because the BGH1, which came out last year, turned out to be quite a big success for the company and it found its way into a lot of multicam environments and reality TV shows. But the GH5 color always kind of handicapped that camera. So this was a very necessary upgrade, especially for professional production environments. And like the S1H, it's likely going to be Netflix approved. The real reason to buy this camera is simple. Multicam and streaming with some of the best color science and firmware flexibility in the industry. Its compact design also means you can place it just about anywhere. And just like the Vericam, we have Ethernet, SDI, and Genlock, all standard issue. The BS1H does trump the Vericam by offering both SDI and HDMI output, though this is also cheaply solved on the Vericam by using an SDI to HDMI converter. Compared to the Evo 1, which has SDI and HDMI, but lacks the Ethernet and the Genlock. Like the BGH1, Panasonic is betting that this camera is gonna find its way to a lot of multicam environments, like TV shows, houses of worship, etc. And if you're looking at it saying, hmm, this looks a whole lot like a Z-cam or a Red Komodo, you're not wrong, except the fact that it has better built-in I.O. than both of those cameras. So should you buy this camera and then rig it out for cinema? Well, that depends. It comes down to how you like to use your camera. In my opinion, if you're an indie filmmaker or content creator, the S1H is still the much better product, just in terms of usability right out of the box. The BS1H is easier to rig on a gimbal and is way lighter than the S1H, so you'll likely be less exhausted with longer shoots, but you're going to give up usability. In terms of functionality right out of the box, the S1H is really hard to beat for the creator set. A beautiful EVF for shooting in all lighting conditions, IBIS, a great LCD screen with a master display touch carried over from the Vericam and the Eva 1. And it also doubles as a solid photo camera. Where I found operating the BS1H with an external monitor to be quite a struggle even compared to my experiences with Z cams. One additional frustration is that when exporting RAW through HDMI, you still need a second SDI monitor cell phone, or a computer to operate the camera. In my opinion, there should just be a data overlay off and on switch. If not recording raw, then my preference was to ditch the monitor and use my cell phone. Now this is great for content creators, 
but I don't think it's a worthwhile solution for more demanding production settings. Okay, so now how does the BS1H or the S1H compare to the functionality of the EVA 1 or the Vericam? Well, the Vericam is obviously quite heavy and quite large. You're not gonna just pop this baby into your backpack. But like all Proline cinema cameras, having a beefy design, built-in neutral density, and ample buttons and displays means that there is no substitution for this kind of product in a professional production environment. When time is money, the Vericam will continue to save you an irreplaceable amount of both and frustration. Now, not everyone loves the design of its remote controller, but it's a highly functional and reliable camera that operates at lightning speeds and can handle the abuse of daily rental use. The EVA 1 can be considered a slightly more mobile version, faster with some things and more fiddly with others. So now what about color? Now that we have all these cameras, we can actually look to see how they compare. Using the same lens with the same white balance, shooting both V-Log and adding a LUT, it's pretty clear to see there is a color difference. Now it's minute, but each camera offers a slightly different image, slightly different color and skin tones. Even with a quick custom grade, there are still some tonal discrepancies. Taking it outside, you can see that my skin tone looks nearly identical and the vector scope confirms this, but my shirt is two very different colors of green. This might be an IR issue in the context that both cameras were using heavy ND. Now allow me to state before I go any further, that the image out of the S1H and of the EVA 1 have been some of my absolute favorite when compared to the competition. But I was delighted to see how much nicer the Vericam image looked. It wasn't drastic, but it made me understand some of the value and the cost of this camera beyond its functionality. Now I didn't do enough tests to say conclusively that these cameras do not share the same color science, but they're different enough to say they're not the same. But that, to be honest, is of little consequence because what the BS1H is designed to do, it does better than just about anything else, which brings the gorgeous image of the S1H and the networking abilities of the BGH1 together, offering multicam productions, especially those already in the Panasonic ecosystem, an incredibly powerful and reliable camera. If you are a doc or an indie film shooter, now it's really hard to beat the EVA1 or the S1H since you'll likely never require Genlock or networking and they're light enough to shoot with all day long. The Vericam LT really is a production camera. It's a one trick pony, but that trick is often worth the cost. The differences in the look of these cameras is not imperceivable. They are different, but different enough to matter? I don't think so. And that's because it really depends on what you're shooting and how you like to operate your camera. What I love about Panasonic that they do better than I think any other brand is that they take really, really good color and operation, and then they give you a camera that fits into every conceivable production environment. So they have a huge range of products that all kind of work together really, really well. Um, and that's it for today, guys. I wanna do a couple shouts out. One is thank you to Panasonic for providing us with the Vericam LT, and as well to Carissa Dobson, who is a DP in uh, the US, who was very gracious with her time. I had a phone call conversation with her uh, where she talked about her experience using all these different Panasonic cameras uh, in her career and some of her thoughts on using even this new BS1H. So thank you, Carissa, as well for your time. And that's it for me. As always, guys, please subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and comment in the comment section below. I'm sure you got something to say. For me, for now, I'm out. Peace.